We're there. Yay. We made it. Thanks. I am Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are here in Indiana this week. So last week, where were we, Hawk? I can't remember. It's so hard. Michigan. We were up in Michigan. We were up at Chesney, <laughs> Chesney Michigan. Creative, at Creative Passions. Passions up there. And we made our little way down. And we're down here in, I think it's central Indiana. Is that right? Okay. Central Indiana. We're just outside of Indianapolis in a little town called Noblesville. Maybe not so little. And um, a shop called Always in Stitches. So if you are ever in this area, come by. Not. Join us today. We're going to talk about all sorts of things. Come on in. I have Nancy with me, who is the inventory diva, was her title. She's also like the event coordinator and she a has, teacher. She has many hats. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to get her, we need to get her a hat and just have her like switch it out. Like one of those, you know, those charger cable things yeah. that have like the six of them. You could just right. have one that's just a different um, hat. But no. no. Okay. <laughs> she does it all though. So how long have you been here at Always in Stitches? Uh, probably about six years, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you do all sorts of things. I do. I so do. tell me a little bit about it. Um, I'm a quilter. Mm -hmm. I'm a garment sewer. I'm a cross stitcher, a wool person, a knitter, a crocheter. See, she does all the stuff. Uh, so you teach classes here. And you I teach do. some of the cuddle mm -hmm. classes. And we have a brand yeah. ambassador who works as well with you guys, yes. Lisa, yeah. who I have to say was super nice in a couple, two, last year? Last year, yeah. I was supposed to come by here and teach, and then I got sick, and so Lisa had to yeah. step in, and she did it. So that was yeah, a great like little start of a relationship. So yes, we're kind of we're we're well bonded with Always yes, and Stitches really here. Um, so you guys have a kit that's available. Yes. And uh -huh. how do they find the kit? Um, if they go onto our website, mm -hmm. uh, www.alwaysandstitches.com, and you'll look up for. Um, Sew Together Tuesday's Rainbow Pillow, and it'll pop up, and they'll be able to purchase it. Yep. So there you go. So it'll look like you're signing up for a class. Yes. You're not. You're buying the kit. Okay. <laughs> so make sure that we're clear about that, and then you'll put in your address, yeah. and they'll ship you the kit. And the kit is super cool. Um, so you guys also do other lives or other mm -hmm. YouTubes, yes. right? So tell me yes. about what those are. Um, we have several quilt along sew alongs that we are on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. It's mm -hmm. Always in Stitches 1. And um, we also do a floss tube, which is cross-stitching. Got it. So that's the one thing that's really interesting about this this shop is they have like a big quilting area like with all the quilting cotton and batiks and they've got a bunch of cuddle that's here and a bunch of kits and then they have a whole section in the back that's all like yarn and needle arts. Yes. Which is yes. kind of an interesting thing because yes. it's not normal for most right. quilt shops. Not. So they're really well known for that. So if you're into like the needle arts and other stuff like she is with the knitting and crochet and embroidery and cross stitch <laughs> all of that is a great place to go too so they've yeah. got lots of cuddle but all of that stuff oh, yeah. Yeah, as well we um what else do we need to tell them we got the kits we got where to find you always in stitches one is what yes. you are on instagram on yes. facebook um, I think, I believe it's just Always in Stitches. Always in Stitches and then YouTube. So you can follow them in all of those places. They do pretty regular YouTubes that are about, or YouTube videos about those topics. So if you are into like the needle arts, that's the place to go to get more information about that. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think go. that's what we needed. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's do Have it. Fun. So let's make a rainbow pillow. That's what we're doing today. So let's make a kit. But we're doing the rainbow pillow. Before we get it? started, that's it. Before we get started, though, we want to make sure that you know, if you share the video, we will enter you to win a beginner box. We're right here. Oh, there okay. we go. My favorite kit. Yeah. Three one yard cuts with all the fun stuff inside. You, so if you share the video, um, share with your favorite, you know, people, your sewing folks, your friends, um, sewing groups that you've got on Facebook, whatever. Share it away, and you'll be entered to win. At the end, we'll draw a winner, and we'll announce that on here, and then we'll ship you that kit. So you can put your um, – we'll have you send your info to us um, through Facebook. The kit – oh, National Quilting Month – or National Sewing Month, sorry. National Sewing Month. National Quilting Month was a few months ago. Um, so September is National Sewing Month, and we're doing a big giveaway. There's three grand prizes that are worth more than $3,000 each. You need to go to our – blog, which is at uh, shannonfabrics.com slash blog, and you'll be entered to win. You can enter to win over there. I'll find the blog post that's about it. Ellen will probably put the link in the comments, <laughs> and then you just click that link. You can go over there, sign up. You'll be signed up for our newsletter, and then you'll be entered to win. And I think you have until the 30th, so 30 months in September. <laughs> I think that's what it is. So then you'll be entered to win, and we'll draw a winner next month. All right? Okay. Is that all the stuff I have to take care of? I think so. That was, I think that's all the book. I think I remembered most of it this week and I'm really proud of myself because I don't always, <laughs> sometimes I really struggle to remember. Okay. So I think it helps that, yeah, our mics are working. I think. I, I'm into that. So this is what we're doing this week. 
Is that the okay. pattern? We're making it a little rainbow pillow. This pattern is available as a free download from our website. You will also get it with your kit. Okay. So let's talk about ingredients. So if uh, Jeremy wants to throw up the ingredients list, we'll talk about that. All right. We'll talk about what you need for this pattern. All right. All right so you're going to need the, fra the free rainbow pillow pattern, which, like I said, if you're in shop, you can pick it up here. You can also download it uh, from the website. You'll want the kit from Always in Stitches, or you can buy all those little pieces, but they've already done it for you. You'll want polyester filling, which is like stuffing. Thin batting, I'm using the Quilter's Dream Poly. You'll want a stretch needle, 9014 stretch needle from Schmetz. Polyester thread, I'm using Mettler from, or Metrosine from Mettler. Felt tip marker or ballpoint pen. Rotary cutter and mat from Olfa. Micro serrated scissors, today I've got my Karen K. Buckley's. You'll also want long flower head pins for a couple of things. You're gonna be surprised at how much we don't pin today. Uh, basting spray, a stiletto, of course, my favorite is the one from by Annie, and a walking foot for your machine. Okay, so you will need all of those things for this project. All right. Okay. Make sure I've got everything. I think so. I'm going to move my beginner kit. Beginner box. Because it is a little bit big. Okay. So we're going to start. This pattern is kind of a funky one. So it is. Let's move it over here. I'm going to move the kit. Give myself some room here. So I want to talk about the, the project itself just really quick. So this is actually a banded pillow. So it's a, a shaped pillow. Okay, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to put the two sides together and then it has this band that goes over the whole thing. So we're going to talk about how to do that. It's kind of a funky one because it actually this band is four different pieces that we sew together. So it's going to be... It's going to be a good one, all right? So we kind of want to talk about the process of how to put it together and then um, how to do that band on it. Because the shaped pillows are so much fun. And we have a whole bunch of pillows now that are like that, where they have a band that goes around them and makes them very 3D. Um, it's just a great way of doing it, all right? So we've got the pattern. Who designed that pillow? Oh, sorry, Gail Camargo did. Gail Camargo <laughs> designed that pattern. Um, and she is one of our, she's kind of like the cuddle extraordinaire. She has been working with our fabric for a very long time. And she's very creative. And so she designed this pattern and then we morphed it to use it here. Okay. All right. So what you're going to get in the pattern is you're going to get the pattern or the instructions. All right. And then you're going to get the pattern sheet. So this is the important part is that you're going to get these and need to blow them up. All right. If you try to make your little rainbow pillow this size, no one's going to be happy. You will okay? go crazy. No one's going to be happy. Please <laughs> blow it up. You can just do it on your copy or your printer at home or take it to the copy shop. It needs to be 200% is what it is. Okay? So everything is 200%. When you do that, you get pattern pieces that are this size. All right? So it's kind of hard to tell sometimes how much 200% is, but it is bigger than you think it will be. Let me just say. All right? So now, I'm going to put this stuff away, and we're going to start working through it. So in the pattern, too, it'll tell you what you need for the different squares. So you're going to subcut these first. So make sure that you do that. You cut your little um, rectangles first, and then we're going to cut our arcs out of that. So I've got one of those. I've got the lilac that I'm going to do. So you can tell I've actually used my pattern a few times here. It's banana. I think that's my coral. And, of course, the last one that I pick up is the one I wanted. There we go. Lilac. Okay. So I'm going to take these. We're going to cut this. So you're going to cut all of your rectangles, and then you're going to cut your pieces. So each one of these, we need to make sure, I'll turn it this way so you guys can see it, that the nap is going the right direction. So we're going to give it a little pet. See? Okay. So if it's running this direction, then I want to fold it out, and I'm going to trace this on the back of it. So one of the things that comes up a lot in class is finding the nap. When we're doing this, you don't want to fold it up. No, no, no. Always fold it sideways. Give it a little pet. Okay? That helps a lot. And we're, we're working in relationship to this, to this. arrow. There right. We go. And that nap mark is on all of your pattern pieces. So use it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And then I'm going to use some pattern weights. So these are some favorites that I've been dragging around with me. And they are perfect for this size because they like, like fit. <laughs> so these are from uh, one of our brand ambassadors, um, Bianca, who makes these. And she has them on her website that we'll probably put the... It is on the screen. Good, good. So you know where yep. to find them. I really like them because they're, they're little and they're really easy to transport. So these just come with me. And I think there's like eight in the package. 
So I'm going to weigh my, weigh my pattern down because it's easier. What I found is if I don't do this, this shifts a lot. Okay, so I have to weigh it down with something. These pattern weights work great. All right, so now usually, if you follow me, you know that I usually use this beauty to trace everything. It works really well, except for this one, we're kind of doing applique. So we don't actually want to do this because we, then we have to cut off the edge. So we want to use something that will just go away. So if you have a water soluble or an air soluble, this works out fabulous. This is water soluble. It's light. I'm not going to be able to see it later. And I'll show you what I mean because I have one that is an example of how not to do it because I love those examples. I'm really good at them. All right, I'm just going to trace around this whole thing. So you're going to need two of each of these because we're going to do a front and a back. And you're going to want to make sure that you put your little notch in here. So we're not going to cut a notch. We're just drawing a line. Okay. Okay. That's the top center. Yep. So okay. where that notch is, do not actually cut a notch. Pretty please. Go ahead and just draw a little one. All right. So now... I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. So you could Pardon. cut this out with your scissors, but I will tell you that cutting it out with scissors, it's a lot harder to get a really smooth line. And you might have tried this if you're doing applique. Like it's harder to get a really smooth line with the scissors. And I've tried a bunch of times, especially with this inside curve. It's much harder. So we're just going to use the, um, the rotary cutter, and it's fine. There's also the smaller one that's 24 millimeter, I think, that's a little bit sharper curve that you can use. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. You don't normally cut with a rotary cutter, but here we are. I don't. And I'm going to turn it this way because it's easier for me to cut this arc than this arc. Okay. So I'm just going to turn it. We're just going to follow right along that little line. And as long as I don't really stop, I'm good. So just turn your body and keep going. Bink. Okay, so then I get a nice round curve. I'll do the same thing here. And the inside curve is obviously tighter, and on the smaller ones, it's even more so. Did you see me back up and redo it there? Nope. Didn't see it. Okay. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Nobody saw that. Great. I love it when that happens. Okay. Close enough. See, that was my little backup. Oh, did you want me to cut that part too? Okay. <laughs> Fine, I'll make it equal. All right, so now you have a whole bunch of scrap here that I want you to save and use for some other fun cuddle applique project, okay? Because you will have a good chunk out of the middle for all of those, which, you know, pros and cons. But now you have an excuse to make more cuddle applique. Yeah. Oh, that's actually a good point. The, the kit, if you get the kit from the store, how many oh, yeah. pillows can you make with it? You can make two. At least. That's cool. You might have to buy a little more coral because coral strip is big. But yeah, you'll be able to make two pillows. So what that also means is if you mess up, you have plenty of fabric, which is great. Because, you know, yeah. Nobody had to see the piece that I pieced together this morning because I thought I was out of fabric. <laughs> that would have been a thing. So uh -oh. we're going to give this a good little shake. So this is one of those um, examples where, like, you can flick this stuff and it will come off, too. And we're just going to try to get as much off before I start working with it because I'm just going to sew it. Um, you can throw it in the dryer if you have a bunch of them. We were talking yesterday that you can put it in there with one of those little, like, what did you call it? I want to say the little dainty bags. Oh. Um, the lingerie bags or whatever, the little, like sure. the meshy sort of ones. You could put those in there and it'll knock around. When you put really small pieces in the dryer to do like the cuddle, whatever we call it. I can't or the remember cupcake it with the confetti. No, no, or, yeah, that. But like this would work for that too, is to put it in a small bag and let it bonk around in there and not just loosen the dryer because it doesn't bonk around as much. So that's what I found is smaller pieces are less likely to get around in the dryer as much. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But normally in the dryer with the wet washcloth. Wet washcloth. Let it tumble around for a couple minutes. And then all the lint will. Yeah. This, if you put it in a little away. mesh bag, you'll be, you'll be good. Okay. So we're going to cut out all of our pieces. So you're going to have, we have three strips, four strips, sorry. So we're going to have a coral one, yellow one, purple one, blue one. We're going to cut all of these out twice, okay? So I've already done all that because that's a lot of tracing and cutting to watch me do. Nobody wants to stick around that long, okay? So like the magic of television, 
we have our pieces already ready. Okay, so I am getting started with my big piece of batting. And I can't remember how big that piece is. 21 by 24. So big. It tells you a measurement, and that measurement is actually important. So if you, <laughs> if you watch the show very much, you know that I kind of, I'm a lot of ish. You know, like it's close. It's fine. This one actually, we want it to be um, five inches. Give me that ruler, the, wide, the long ruler. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and refresh my memory. Here it is. So from the batting, we're going to cut a 28 by 22 inch piece. And we need to draw a line down the middle. So that means this wide piece is 14 inches in. So I'm going to measure it in just a couple places. And then basically match the line up. So I'm making a line for my center. And this is going to be really important in placing your, um, your arcs. And then I'm going to do a row or a line here that's five inches from the bottom. So your line here may not be perfectly cut perfectly straight. Um, so you want to make sure that it's definitely aligning with this center. All right. So I'm just going to draw three all the way across. Okay. So this is the magic of this pattern, in my opinion, is because all of a sudden now I have things to line things up with, and it gets so much easier. So you know that line that we did in the middle of your arc. We're going to use this to line it up. We're going to line up the bottoms with this line. Okay, and that's what helps your rainbow go together in the right way. Got it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, stick this guy on here. Get my middle to line up. Get this to line up. So this is where I want it to go. So now, I'm going to use one of my favorite tools. This stuff, OD505 spray, it's my favorite kind of spray basting, and it totally works to stick this on here and not have to pin it and sew it down. So I love the 505 spray. It doesn't smell. It's awesome. Okay, and we're going to use it so that it's kind of, it's not really a no-sew because we're definitely <clears> going to sew, but it's a little bit less pinning, which is great. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is this weird little trick that I do. It may or may not work for you, but it works for me. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I got a little stick on there already. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in between here. That's probably a really horrible noise for the people at home. Sorry. <laughs> the crinkliness. They're always, <laughs> you can hear it more. Okay. So I'm going to spray the back. I'm going to lay this back down. I'm going to get it to fit. Okay, let me do it again. So the whole time I'm going to do this where I do half, and I do half, and I do half, and half. All right. We'll come back and lay it down the other way. So now what this does is it lets it stay here until I need to take it to the sewing machine, which I'm not going to do first. You could go and you could stitch this all down first if you wanted to, but we're going to do that in a minute. Uh, we're going to do the second part first. That was confusing for me. We're going to do the second part first. <laughs> you mean the, the, the second we're do color the second of rainbow? We're going to do the second step before we do the sewing. Try again. Okay, so we're going to put this on. <laughs> so now this is where I got confused when I was trying to do this before there was a real pattern. Because how do I get this evenly lined up was really my issue. Is I, don't want, I want this stripe to be pretty even. If you look at, the, if you look at the, the real one, they're pretty darn even. And the trick with this is getting it to line up. Well, how do we do that? Because we can't really mark on the cuddle on the front of it. So how do we get them to line up? And I figured a little trick. So if you've got the stiletto that I like, that's the, the by Annie one here. And I've got my little ruler. I'm going to do this thing where I go ahead with this. And I'm going to mark a half an inch with my stiletto. I'm just going to mark it every once in a while so I have something to line it up against. But that little stiletto scratch actually is pretty darn visible. Can you guys see that okay? We can. Okay, great. It's showing up. So surprisingly, it works really well to just do this little, <clears throat> excuse me, this little scratch in it. But now I can see that, and that's what I'm going to line my next rainbow up. 
So now I've got the, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got the little, you know, the scratches and I've got the middle and I've got the bottom. So I've got three things to line it up against that I can get it right. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get it in place. So I put it in place first and then I will lean a half back and tack it and then do it again. Okay, and those will stay pretty well, those little scratchy bits, until I actually, you know, flip them away. All right. So this is just freezer paper is all this is. I used a sheet of paper earlier. You can use whatever. Just something, because all we're trying to do is block it so we're not putting spray based on this. All right. So again, and then I'll lean this over. See how close my middle is? Yeah. Pretty darn good. Okay, and then we'll do the little tap. So somebody was talking, well, we didn't talk about it. So we have the I Love Cuddle group. If you're not on there, you should join it because it's great. But on somebody was talking Facebook. on Facebook. Yep. And somebody was talking on there the other day about their 505 not sticking. And so sometimes that does happen because the stuff will get old. But one of the things that people tend not to do is pat it down. So that little, Jackie calls it the Cuddle Smackdown. The which Cuddle I Smackdown. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> but that little... That little smack actually makes the two pieces stick together really nicely. We have an in we have an in house question. Are you abutting it or they're overlapping? Okay. They're overlapping by a half so an you're inch. Putting it towards the line that you made. Yes, so it's going to overlap and line up right against that. Yep. So here's the little scratches that I made along here. So this cut edge. So if I push it, you can probably see here's the bottom edge of the fabric underneath. Okay, but once it, uh, once you're using it, and especially if you've washed it and the stick goes away, it'll be fine. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and sew this. All right, are we ready for that? <laughs> you ready? Yes. Come on around. I'm ready. Okay, so I've got my Bernina today. As usual, I've been using the Bernina for this season of the show and learning it as I go, which is kind of fun. So today we're using the zigzag. And I've got it set at a 3.5 by 3.5 zigzag. So a lot of times I want to do a bigger zigzag. With this one, I'm doing kind of a smaller one to get it to hide a little bit more. And then let me see. Get this up here. So one of the things that I figured out when I was sewing this before is that if I line this up in my machine, so I can do a couple little things to make it easier. So I'm going to put my needle down and then put it back up because I want to put it on a side that I can now line it up. Okay, so I've got my stitch is moved over. Let's see, yep. So I've moved my needle over to three. So you can see that's the number up here. Okay. So I just move my needle over and now my needle will come down just on the left side, just inside this foot. Does that make sense? Kind of does, yes. Okay. So, so if I put this so down. So where do you want that to hit? So that's what I'm, I'm looking at. So if I put my needle down now, it's going to go right on the edge of the purple. So now I'm going to, I need to lift my foot. Hold on. Do you want it just on the purple or just off? Just of off the, the purple. Okay, so, in, so into the blue. Yep. So I'm going to get it so that the edge of this is running right along the edge of here. Okay. So... Does that make sense? So right now we can see that that purple is just butting up right against here. And my needle is going to come down right on that edge. So we'll stitch this a little bit and then I'll, you can go around the other side and check it out in a couple minutes, or you know, half a minute. So right about now, this is where if you had drawn these with a regular Sharpie and cut them, you would probably be seeing some That's black, exactly right. There right, is, yes. Right along this cut That's edge. That's exactly what happens is because the black will show right in here. And I do have a sample. If we can remember, I'll show you. Because, um, yeah, you'll see a little bit of the black. If you do that, you just cut it off. But it makes it harder to keep that edge really nice because now you've had to cut in just a little bit and try to even it up. Okay, so yeah, that is exactly the point of using a color that isn't super dark and will wash away. Okay, so we're just going to zigzag. If you want to go around to the other side, you can see how that's lining up. So in the, in the pattern, it says that you can use a buttonhole stitch or you can use the zigzag. And I kind of like the zigzag. 
because it's fast. And I found that the zigzag and the buttonhole don't look drastically different. Uh, so I'll show you the difference in just a second. Buttonhole or, or button blanket or blanket. Sorry, blanket, blanket stitch. Got yeah, it. some people call it a button blanket stitch. Got it. That's the same thing. Same thing basically. On a machine, especially, it's very similar. Um, okay, so there we go. So you see how that comes and just goes right along this edge. So I'm not I'm not trying to half it. I'm trying to get all of it on here. So this one I did with the blanket stitch. So you can see how that looks a little different. You end up with the lines coming straight out instead of a zigzag. But it's very similar. Very similar. Got okay, it. and this one takes a lot longer because we do like a stitch, 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 stitch. Like it takes a long time. Got it. So, yeah. Don't do this one if you don't want to. Got it. <laughs> it takes if a you, while. If you like that look, great, but just know you're going to yeah, spend more time You're going to spend it. a little bit more time doing it, and the zigzag works beautifully. So, there you go. All right, so... We and stitched. we are basically rinse and repeat with rinse this. Rinse and repeat. Got it. So you're going to do the same thing, same thing, over and over again. Over and over again, like four, four times. times. What I would suggest when I did it, I did both sides at the same time, and I would suggest that, that was a good way of doing it, is have it, starting with the two batting pieces, sewing these on, sewing it on, sewing it on, sewing it on. Like you okay. go back and forth or do this whole one and then do that whole one. The, the front of the pillow. The front of the, it. And, or the back of the pillow. Exactly. Got it. So once we've gotten all of the bands on, it's going to look like this. We're going to pretend that's not there. You can't see it. <laughs> oh, hang on. There. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It's like it never happened. Okay. So now we've got them all stitched on. These are all just zigzagged on. No problem. Works out beautifully. All right. And then we're going to put and a then cloud you, on. This, you zigzag this last edge down. By I itself. did. Yes. I see that. Got yes. It. So this is this is important, and you can do this at any point. You can do it at the beginning and stitch this down, and then stitch this, or you can stitch these at the very end. It's just important because when we're sewing the whole thing together, these will need to be like adhered, okay? And the the basing spray isn't quite enough to hold that in place. Okay. All right. So yes. Thanks for pointing that out. Let's stitch that down. It'll be like this. Ta-da. All right, so now we have the, the cloud, which is this piece here. So the cloud piece is uh, Lux Cuddle Marble, which makes it really fluffy and kind of fun. Okay, so it has a really good, I don't know, cloud look to it. But it does have a nap, so make sure that it goes the right direction. <laughs> and don't cut it upside down like I did, because it's not as much fun to recut them out. But, you know, you can do it. So there are two of them. Because you need to cut one this way and one this way for each side. So you cut it. two. One reverse. And two. Okay? And then make sure that you put those little marks on here. So these little marks, they seem weird, but they're going to come in really handy. All right, so this, this is what I was talking about. And that guy. And yeah, that guy. Exactly. Okay. And this is the out, outside of the rainbow. This is the inside of the rainbow. Okay, so it's very well marked. You just have to kind of pay attention, which is not really always my. And I noticed that actually on this this forte, there's the nap isn't actually marked on this piece. Oh no, here. I'm I'm here. I'm causing. This is me causing trouble. Rose, we're on it. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Did I did I do it right? You did. Okay, good. And then that Writing upside down is hard. <laughs> I was. Upside down and backwards. Okay, <laughs> so they're going to go on like this. All right, that's how it is. So you're going to, I put the arrows on here because it confused me. Once I turn this over, it's really hard to tell. So I did, true, true story, I did cut them upside down. That was the first thing I did. And then I was like, oh, wait, these don't, don't fit on there right. Can I do it the other way? I can't. I can't do it the other way. So I had to redo them, but it was really hard. Once I laid them down, like I couldn't tell which was the top and which was the bottom. Um, so make sure you write on there which way it is and put the put the uh, pattern on there the right direction so the nap goes down. So one of the things about the clouds when you're doing them is we're going to zigzag this down and we want the edge to kind of mush into the other fabric, right? We want to do the big zigzag so we can fluff out the fibers and all that good stuff. But we also want to see the edges. So when I do the clouds, I cut them out with my scissors. Then one of the other things I do is I will come back 
So if you come in and look at this, I'm going to move this. Oh, wait. Rose, Rose says she's on it. Okay, great. Thanks, Rose. <laughs> Hi, Rose. <laughs> Rose is our, our pattern writer. And our... she's awesome. Okay, so which one? So outside is the one. So that's this way. Okay, so this way I have to, like, figure it out. So outside is the one strip, which is here. That's going to go over here. All right. But one of the things that I realize is when I'm doing this, I need to be able to see these edges really well. And if we cut this with the blade that I like so much, so this guy that we always talk about how to cut it with, how to cut Lux Cuddle with it, mm -hmm. if we cut it with this one, we end up with even more nap hanging out, and I actually don't want that. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to cut all of this. Whoa, crazy. I know. It is nuts, because normally I'm like, less mess, more fuzz. And I'm like, yeah, let's make more mess and take the fuzz off. But it's just so we can kind of, for lack of a better word, like harden up the edge so I can see it better. Because it's really hard to do the top stitching on it if I can't see it. Okay, so the other thing that you can do with this is a rotary cutter. But my rotary cutter, the 45, doesn't really go around those curves very well. Got it. So if you had a smaller diameter rotary right. cutter, it does these little curves a little better. Yeah. And if you, I, if you I had, recommend that. If I had pulled out my small one. <laughs> okay. But you didn't. I didn't. And it really is because most people don't have the tiny one. But if you do, you can actually get these curves. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. And now you can see it just makes it the ease, that curve easier to see versus this one. Got it. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. It, so it, this, I can just see that this hard is, edge. Um, this kind is of fluffy. More of a cartoony cloud, anyway. It is. So uh, it, the, having like the the neat edge seems better. Yeah, and we're just going to sew this inside of a seam allowance. So this part down here is just going to get sewn into the bottom, into the band. So it really doesn't matter if it's a hard edge there or not. Okay. So a lot of times we don't want to cut that off because we want to fluff it up and use the fluff to our advantage, but at this point, it's the one thing that I do, uh, yeah, do differently on this. I cut all this off. That's that's a pretty new technique. Yeah, we don't do this very often. No, because usually I want it, but this time I'm like, nope, don't want it. All right, so Jeremy, you want to mute me for a second? Mute us? I got it. I can mute okay. her. Here we go. Three, two, one, mute it. happens it's great okay all right are we back we are back yay all right so see it totally worked all right now this bottom is much easier to see and i'm going to put this on so my cloud is going down then i'm going to line this up so that my line here goes with the inside edge of the cloud and this line here is going to line up with my line here got it there's kind of a, a lot of aligning and kind of having to do this yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> with this pattern. I, I see that. A little bit more, but it's it's not difficult. It's just, and like, yeah, it's not difficult and it works really well. So for me, this was the part that I was like, how do I get this to line up? That, that does the same thing? Mm -hmm. Got it. And then I just like, brink, get it to work. And basically what I do is on mm -hmm. mine, I get this one to line up perfectly. And then this one falls where it does. So if you do it perfectly, it'll work out on both sides. And if you do it ish, like I do, then you'll get one side that's perfect and one side that's a little bit off. Okay. But as long as this middle thing is the same, if you've done that the same on both sides, it'll match up. Does that make sense? I Yes, I okay. do think it does. So pick a side, make it work. Pick a side, stick with it. All right, so <laughs> now we're going to do the cloud, and I have to do that whole lining up thing again. So I'm going to spread this a little bit bigger because I really don't want to get my basting spray on the front of my pillow. And I do want to base that whole thing down. So one of the cool things about the basting spray is that it's actually, while it's sticky, it will unstick pretty easily. Repositionable. So there, I've got it lined up bit. there. And I got it lined up there. That was a pretty good. That, that was a good shot. Whack down. That's awesome. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a pull. Put it in place. All right. So now I've got this one done. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stitch this, and I'm gonna stitch across the top here, and then I'm gonna keep on going. 
So I'm going to get this whole edge in place. We're going to stitch it down just like this side where it's all stitched. Okay? You ready to do it? Yeah, hang on. Let me, let me take a look at this. Just so we can kind of see what we're shooting for here. Okay. We're shooting just, for a nice zigzag. Zigzag all the way around. All the way Got around. Got it. Here we go. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to use the edge of my foot to make sure that I've got the zigzag in position. And I'm going to do it so that I'm starting kind of off of the pillow because this is the part that's going to show. The rest of it's going to get cut off. We're just doing this to get it adhered all the way. What do you mean it's going to get cut off? Oh, you mean it's right going to get hidden in the seam allowance? Yes. Yeah. So this part, will, this part, I'm going to cut the matting off. That's the next step. Oh, okay. I know. You're jumping ahead. Sorry. It's okay. There are worse things that happen. Okay. So this pivot I'm, thing. I'm oh. eager. Oh, so one of the things I was going to mention on this is I did struggle just a little bit when I first started sewing with this, with um, the presser foot pressure. I, I put it down. So it was originally at 75, I think. Now I can't remember exactly, but I put it down to 50. Got it. Okay, hey, we had a right. question about what the, um, what's the walking foot that you're using on this Bernina? It is a Bernina walking foot. Got it. Yeah. And that is what it that is what it is called. It's, yes. It's a proprietary though sold separately. Yes, exactly. So it is comes you know for the Bernina machines, but it is a separate thing. We have talked about before about the even feed that comes with the Berninas. And we talked about it in a video we did over the summer for the summer shorts on how to sew cuddle. And we talked about different kinds of walking feet, digital dual feed, and the even feed. So if you're curious about the differences between those, if you look up the summer shorts sewing with cuddle, you'll see we sewed a little bit on each of those machines. And we sewed, we sewed with the Bernina even feed. Got it. Do you remember that? I remember? do remember that. And uh, no, no. No offense, but the even feed didn't do a great job. It did not do a great job, so that's why um, we use a walking foot. It is good for foot. other things, but not necessarily great for cuddle. But exactly. the walking foot totally works. Yep. Good. So on parts like this, like it gets super fluffy, and I can't really see where my edge is. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to see if I can pop my foot up. I'm going to push this back a little bit so I can see my edge. Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Now I can go for it. And I'm still going to just kind of aim for it. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. To some extent, this is sort of just basting. It's really just basting it in place. Got so it. that when I sew the band on next, it goes right. Okay, so I do have my little pivot thing, and that works really nicely. So if you have a pivot function on your machine, make it work for you here. What does that mean when you stop? It, it raises the, needle. the foot just it, a little. It raises the foot, but leaves the needle down? Yeah, exactly. Got so it. now as I stitch around, it'll, it'll keep it where I want it to be. Keeps it in place. And you could do this with a straight stitch if you wanted to. I just stick with the zigzag because that's where I'm at. Clearly, I'm just randomly aiming. You are not randomly aiming. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> You've got x-ray vision. You can, see, you, get, you can see right through the nap. <laughs> I just kind of know where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we we're gonna know. repeat this conversation that we had last week. Everything is going to require practice. Yes. <laughs> you make it look really easy. <laughs> it will require a little bit of practice. I have sewn quite a few clouds on at this point because yeah, that's what I needed to do to figure out what I was doing. So I'm just gonna sew right around here. I'm gonna come back to where I was. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it off right before I get into the into the fabric that'll show. So right now I've got this applique onto here. So I applique this onto the batting. Now I'm applicating here, onto here. And then I'm gonna do that thing that we do with Lux Cuddle. Can we pull it away from the light a little oh, bit? Oh yeah, sure, does it blow out too bad? Just a little, there we go. So then I'm gonna go ahead, and here I think I'm helping because we're under so much light. I forget about white. And we're just gonna fluff up those stitches so that the nap comes out of there and it makes a nice soft edge on our cloud. Okay, so you could use others, um, other fabrics for this, like the, the rose would look nice, but the edges on the rose don't look as, don't flip as much. There's another the, one I was thinking the of. Cuddle, cuddle rose. It's, yeah. It's, it's long nap, but it has like, sort of roses and bosses. It has in roses it. in it, which looks really cloudy, but the edges will be harder on that one. So I'm trying to think of like a hide would probably work. The marble is just really good for it because of the nap kind of goes in a few different variations. Oh, you could use seal for it if you really like seal and the big fluffiness. Just saying. 
be a fluffy clown. Big fluffy clown. Big fluffy cloud. Okay, so now we've got that done. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So to get to put it together, we need two sides. So I have one side here. I have one side already done. We're going to go ahead and cut this out. So I'm going to cut this right along the edge of the batting. I might cut some stitches. And I don't really care. Good, okay. good to know. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. These stitches are not, I don't know, they're not permanent stitches. They're really just to hold it together. So if you cut off part of them and it gets loose in one spot, Nobody cares. Again, this the, the the outside edge stitching is like almost like a basting stitch because that's about to get buried inside of the seam allowance right, exactly. for, the, for the band. Got yes. it. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut, if I can find. Here it goes again. My scissors. Those Karen K. Buckleys. <laughs> Where are they? I mean, Here they are. There they are. <laughs> it's the bane of my existence. Losing what, just stuff. being able to find stuff? Yeah. Just yeah I losing know. stuff. It's really... I do it so well. So this I'm going to cut out for the same reason that the the rotary cutter is just harder to get around those corners. Plus, it gives me another chance to clean up those edges a little. What can you tell me about those scissors? Uh, they are micro serrated. They are Karen K. Buckley's, which I really like. So they're micro serrated in here, which you really, I don't know if you can see. They have teeny tiny little serrations. Not as well as you like. Which grab the fabric a lot better. So the micro serrated scissors work best for the cuddle fabrics and Kai makes them, Fomori makes them, and Karen K. Buckley makes them. And apparently it works great for the batting too. It works great for batting too. All it right. grabs all sorts of stuff. And I like, you like those. Applique. Sorry. Yeah. It's good for all sorts of things. I like these because they're just really comfortable in my hand. Yeah. Like so, the, uh, the actual handles, the blue handles are a little on the squishy. squishy side and they're full size also so that you, your hand doesn't get cramped up even though mm -hmm. the blade is small. Yep. You, you've got full size handles, which is a great combination of things. They are great. And somebody mentioned my little my little fabric thing on there. And I just got that from Bernina. But I think it's a So Emma product. Oh, it, these little these little labels. Mm -hmm. And it's a magnet too, right? Boom, yeah, so right? you can put them on it's super easy. Got so it. one that says fabric, one says paper, and one says something else. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other thing we cut? Like I don't know. I can't remember. Thread. One thread. says thread. I didn't know that you had to make a distinction between thread scissors and fabric scissors. Well, because like I would have like my little Kai ones, the little purple ones, I would use those more for thread, but I really wouldn't cut fabric if I were cutting out a dress, for example. Oh, okay. I would use my big huge Kais, and those would be the fabric scissors that like kids will shears. steal and use for paper. Right. So we want to mark them to not steal and, these and scissors. And by kids, you mean... You know, any yep. any guy in the house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what we mean. Got it. The code so, has worked. Somebody who hasn't learned that lesson yet. Right. Yeah, who didn't buy those scissors, or maybe did and didn't realize that they were expensive. You shouldn't be using them for paper. Okay. So I'll get all the way around. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. It's a rainbow. Now, if you wanted to, you could totally do this on some... on. You could do this on a blanket. So if you wanted to do this on a fabric and then make this into a blanket, you could absolutely make this applique on a big blanket. Oh, that would be fun. If you, so you said you with the uh, with the the kit, mm -hmm. you have enough to do two. More. Yep. So you could make four of these. You could turn two of them into pillows, and you could use two of them as appliques on the blanket. To make yeah. A set. Or just make three and make one pillow and oh, an sure. applique. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just because most of us are kind of a little bit. So we don't want to do that much work. We don't have to. But it would be really cute on the front of a, on a little blanket like the Bambino size or even bigger than that to get in a corner. I don't know. We're going to get creative on you. I'm Now I have extras, so I might have to. The next oh. time you see me, I might have a blanket because <laughs> I've got some extras here. So now we've got two of the rainbows. All right. How are we doing on time? Oh, uh, We are still under an hour. Great. Because now comes the little bit more complicated part. Not to scare you. Okay. So basically, we're getting these two. They should mostly match. They mostly match. Okay. They match-ish. <laughs> My theory on everything. Uh -huh. So now we've got the two pieces, and we're going to stick a band together. So this is what I was talking about. It's a little bit funky because we want the band. If we did it just in one color, say we did it in the pink, and we did it all the way around, we'd have pink underneath here, and we don't really want pink under the clouds. We want white under the clouds. Got it. So we're going to do a pieced band. 
So we have a piece that goes here and a piece that goes here and a piece that will go here and one across the top. So we didn't really talk about it, but this, this colorway too is what's in the kit and what's obviously listed in the pattern. You could choose to do any sort of colorway that you wanted to. You could choose brighter colors or a different set of them depending on what you wanted to do. Totally okay. We chose to put the pink up here so that it would go pink, orange, yellow. Um, so the pink goes around the top edge. All right. All right. So that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing that we want to do is get this started. And I'm going to sew it on to here. So I'm going to move this aside. We're going to do one side at a time. And we want to start, according to the pattern, we want to start about four inches from this intersection. So these intersections of where the fabrics come together is the important part. All right. So about four inches is somewhere up here. And I'm going to pin that in place here. But I'm going to go ahead and start sewing down here. OK, yep, totally lost me. This is going to be fun. Great. Right. Is everybody, everybody, okay, good. Is everybody not with me? Cool. Okay, is everybody not with me? <laughs> OK, so I'm going to have a little bit more. And I'm just going to leave this little tail. OK, so this is the same way when we do binding on something. We're going to need the binding to go all the way around. And then we'll join the tails at the end. Got this it. is the tail for when we come back to it. I'm going to start sewing here. And I'm just going to sew this little section. Because then what I need to do, wait. No, 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 it's not upside down. No, it's the right. So this, this, will, this has to like tail in somewhere. I could tail it in here. So my uh -oh. brain just like processed stuff and I was like, I'm following the pattern. Rose, are you still with us? We might be redoing things. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put my tail over here and I'm gonna start sewing over here. Rose is going to tell me, that's exactly what I wanted you to do the whole time. I notice that you are perpendicular pinning. I am. Do you know why? Because you're going around a curve. That's right. <laughs> hey, so when I'm going around a curve. I'm learning. <laughs> I always pin perpendicular. So most of the time when we're sewing with cuddle, we'll do parallel pinning. But when I'm going around a curve, it's a lot easier for me to use perpendicular. And I'll come back and pin this a little bit more, but I'm trying to pin it so that I'm not stretching it, but kind of getting it to ease around the corner. We don't want to stretch it because when you unstretch it, it will just recoil back. So it was a question about finding a kit on the website. And mm -hmm. if I recall, at least for the time being, in order to get a kit on the website, you actually have to sign up for a class that's not that you're not going to be able to attend. That you're taking right now. Yes, you're taking, you're taking a class, class now. Right, right now. And just put in a shipping address for the kit and yep. it will happen. Right. I think move I True. think down the road there will end there will be a skew for that kit as a separate. But right now it's still under the event part of their right. website. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to start sewing here. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to put a little pin right where I want to start. I'm going to leave a little bit that'll be my tail here. I'm going to sew all the way around. And I'm going to stop two inches before the next seam. So where it has to transfer to white. Okay, got it. So in the kit, you get enough fabric. Uh, we're going to cover this again for mm -hmm. just a second. Yeah. You get enough fabric to make two pillows. Yes. And it looks, the kit looks like this cute little frosty bag. Yes, except and for the you, coral. Except, the coral you would need to buy more of to get to completely out of. Oh. Because, because if you look at the pattern, so let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> so on the back of the pattern, it tells you how much fabric you need to buy. That's what's in the kit. Okay. From Got that, it. you're going to sub cut into these little sections. Okay. And you will have lots of them. So the blue, you have more space to make arcs than the coral. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Okay. So the coral, you might have to buy more of to get that extra arc. Or, you or could, use some other fabric that you or have. Or you could piece it. Or, or you could piece it or use right. a different color. Okay. Or, you know. Got it. Whatever you want. But you have enough to make one at least and more. Okay. <laughs> so got it. you're going to have to cut it up at that point and see what you've got. You've got extra to make all sorts of fun stuff. You could try it at the 100% too and then tell me how it works. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. What's oh, the nap on the band piece? The nap that's, on the so band that's piece. That's an in right. audience question. Yes. So the nice. nap on the band piece has to go one way or the other. So on this one, here's my finished one. I've got the nap running this way, right? And I've got the nap running this way. So which way does the band go? One way, one way or another. Okay, so but, it doesn't but, really but matter. not this way. You're, it's not, not this way. It's so not... It's, it's cut width-wise. Okay. Yeah, so the stretch is this direction. But the nap runs this way on this band and this way on this way. Got it. So, so I don't really care which one is my front or my back. They're exactly the same. Okay? So you'll sew it on wrong one way and right the other way. Okay. If you sew them on so that the naps are going in the same direction now, it'll be easier. And then when they fight each other, it's a little harder. So... <laughs> That's how that is. Got Sorry. It. <laughs> My honesty sometimes is too much. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch this over to a straight stitch and 3.5, maybe three. What do I have on? What do I have on the banner, Jeremy? <laughs> I'm going to do a 3.5 and see what happens. Okay. So now I need to make sure that my needle is in the middle. It is. So this is where I switch the needle over. Okay. So if I want to change it, 3.5, great. So if I want to change it, and this, this is sometimes a really good way of doing this, is to measure your walking foot and the needle from the edge of the walking foot. So if you need to move your needle over to get a half an inch, you can do that. All right, I don't because this works beautifully for me. All right, my half inch is right there. So I just line my fabric up with just past the edge of my foot. Okay. <clears throat> If right. they just wanted to get the pattern, that's available on Shannon Fabrics yep. website as well. And yep. then, you know, if for example, if you have a ton of different colored rainbow yep. cuddle at home and you wanted to just be a, to be a scrap buster and you just needed the pattern, that's a free download. It's a free download, yep, from shannonfabrics.com. Yep, go over to the patterns. There's a free pattern. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll get to the free pattern section. Then if you go over there and you just type into the search box, rainbow pillow, it will totally send you it. You might also find the other one that we did that's an applique that's a box, like it's a rectangle. This is the shaped rainbow. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch all the way around here, pulling out the pins as I go. And basically lining up my half inch seam allowance. Work our way. Okay, so this is this is the easy part. We always like to start with the easy, and then we'll get a little more complicated. Also, you can totally stop your sewing and take your pins out. I have a lot of practice, and this is what I do: is I just take them out as I sew. But I know that some people try to do that, and it's hard. So you don't have to. Wait, what don't they have to do? Take the pins out as they're sewing. They have to. They can stop and take a pin out. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. But so a not, lot of people but are like not running over the pins. No. So what I've seen in class this happens is that the pin is here, and I can just slowly take them out, and I'm okay with that. It's totally fine. Without while, taking your foot off. But the what gas. I find is people are doing this, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, I can't get it out. I can't get it out." Like you could uh, okay. stop sewing. Just okay, stop sewing. Take from, your foot off the gas, and then take the pin out. <laughs> from from personal experience, mm -hmm. it freaks me out. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Try, uh, yeah, when I tried, when I was uh, learning how to sew with cuddle, I had to take my foot off the gas, remove the pin. Yes, and exactly. And that's all fine. Totally legitimate way of doing it. So don't feel the slightest bit bad if you have to stop. Okay. And your foot is on the pedal. So you're the one in control of that. Just remember that. Take the foot off, redo it. Yes, I do remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to figure out where my seam intersects. Okay, you see that? So this is where I want the white to be here. So now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to use my little ruler. And I'm going to, oops, the other direction. I'm going to try to get this straight because I want to get it straight across here. And I'm going to mark my half inch from that pin, and that's where I'm going to cut it. Oh, okay. So I'm Got adding it. a half an inch seam allowance to where I want it to intersect. I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. Are we following? Is this still making sense? Yep, that okay. makes sense. 
it's a little bit complicated. So seriously, people in the audience, let me know if you're like, what the heck is she talking about? Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and this part I am going to make sure that my nap is going the same direction between these two pieces. So my nap is going this way, so I want my nap to go that way here. Okay, there's my evidence of prior sewing. Oopsie, you didn't see that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this together. And I'm going to sew a seam there. And because this is just a little seam, I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here. And hold this together and just do a half inch seam allowance or a seam on here. That's because I measured this and that's what I want is a half inch seam allowance. You could do less, but half inch is really easy for cuddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back over here. Put my foot down. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Sorry. Okay. Now we're gonna do? try that again. What it did cut. You? Oh. Okay. And I wasn't trying to was cut. I was like... trying to trying to back stitch. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's done that. All the way to the edge, and then you do a little back stitch. Yeah. Or a, in this case, like, what is it? A, it's a lock, lock stitch. A lock stitch. Got it. Okay. So this is the magic, is that now these two will match. Got it. That's pretty cool, right? Yep. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to get this to match in there. One of the things I noticed is that this goes down just slightly here, so you kind of have to go in about a half an inch, figure out where it's going to match, and pin it there. If it's off a little, nobody cares. I feel like this sort, this banded pillow technique is something that that once you've sort of learned all of the tips and tricks, and especially if you were going to do like this pieced together banding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the whole world of fun shapes is open. Oh, to Oh, one hundred percent. Now, now you just what? cut a fun shape out of cardboard, and <laughs> that's yes. a pattern, and you can make a pillow exactly into anything. Anything. So this, I will tell you, so I'm going to do this in the somewhat lazy way of doing it. If you want it to be very, very pronounced of these, you can go ahead and sew this for half an inch, lock stitch it, come off, and then you'll cut it and really bend this around and make sure it's perfect. Um, you would sew each arc individually will make it much easier because you're going to see I'm going to have to kind of fake it a little bit to get those curves to come around. Oh, that's interesting. You don't you don't clip it though. I don't clip it um, most of the time. Every once in a while, I say I don't, but sometimes I do. And what might be the distinction? That it wasn't bending as well as I want it to. Okay, but it's knit, so it's it it will just kind of work its way around most of the time. Right. This is also a place that like I'm going to have a million and one pins in here. If you're not a pin person, this is a place that you could um, hand baste it, which I know also freaks people out. So if you're not a hand baster, just ignore me right now. But if you don't mind hand basting, this is a great time to just come in here and hand baste this together and get it to um, go where you want it to go. Okay. So one of the things that I will do that I found last time that I liked is finding the corner. So from here, I need to stitch to about here. And then I'm going to pivot. And I can see that on the other side. So then I'll start to turn here. And we're just going to pin all the way around here. I don't know if I have my pin sewing needle. I think I could almost base the other one faster. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you. What? That sounds ridiculous. It's really not hard. <laughs> It's really not. <laughs> and for people who don't mind hand sewing, it's a, it is a quick and easy way of doing it because you don't have to be super careful. Okay. I'm gonna come around here, and then I'm going to find the other next the next corner, basically. So what I'm trying to do is get it. So here's my corner, and if I came straight in, that's where I want this to intersect, so I can feel it there. That's where that's at. So that's where I want it to pivot and start going out again. Okay. Does that make a little bit of sense? It does, yeah. So it's really, it's a place that you can be neurotic or you can not. You know, it's fine either way, whichever you prefer. You can be really picky about it or not care at all. See, it's a lot of pins. I might, have, I might run out. 
Hey, everybody in the comments, did you just see the comment that popped up from Always in Stitches, the shop? They're, they're, they're definitely helping you out on what needs to happen in order to get a kit to come to you. Yay! You're, you're going to order the class, but then put your shipping address in the notes. And uh, it will go. come to you, which is, I think, a great, a great thing that this uh, project is a kit. Yes. Because Makes it really easy because you're going to get all the right colors and everything. Other, otherwise, you know, you have to have... You know, a bunch of different fabric. I just threw it. You threw it? I threw it on accident. I cut it with my finger and oh, chucked it. it. Popped it out. Yeah. Okay. We're almost there. See, it's a million and one pins. Hey, hey. Get off of my <laughs> cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. It's going to be karaoke on So Together Tuesday. I, uh, no. No? No. Okay. Definitely not. No, that it was is, it. That's all you get. That's all? Okay. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I won't ask for more. All right. So I'm going to come around here and do another little dot where I think it's going to come. Bink. So these little these little dots will totally, you know, wash out if I ever decided to wash it. It shouldn't show through to the other side. If you do it with black, it's much more likely to show, so we don't want that to happen. All right. Nancy's still here. Nancy, would you find me a big uh, basting needle? Mm. Like, you know, like a long... <laughs> embroidery needle or something. I'm going to try it with the next one. Because I actually, I've done it on a few of them, and I actually kind of like it. I know Linda's over there going like, oh my gosh, don't bring out the hand sewing needle. She hates it when I hand sew. Actually, I think she just hates it when she hand sews. I could probably do it. I think, fine. She, I think she laughs at the rest <laughs> of them. I think so too. Okay, so I need to stop about <laughs> two inches from this end again. So I'm going to put the little double pins in here so that I know this is where I stop. Okay, I've stuck my two pins together because I need to leave a tail and get this to come back together. But we're going to sew this in first. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of pins. It's a lot of pins. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that's not It's not porcupine. the 100 count of the box. <laughs> so if you bought the box, you still have plenty left. But there is a lot. So I'm going to start sewing up here, and I'm just going to work my way around. All right, so I'm going to try to backstitch here and not cut my thread. <laughs> It's going to come down, and I'm going to pivot right on that seam. There we go. And I'm going to lift my foot and get it to curve out immediately so that it will sort of give a little hump right at that where we come around. Okay. And we'll try to do that. We'll try to pivot every once in a while. Here comes a, here comes a needle. Great. Oh, I see you. where it landed. Awesome. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so because the reason I want to try the basting on the next one is because as I do this, it is going to like, it's going to be a lot of pins. And if you're taking them out every three steps, it's a little bit obnoxious. What is going on? I see you're, you're basically trying to target that little blue dot. Right That's there, exactly right? what I'm doing. And then, and then I'm going to turn. You're going to pivot on that blue dot. That is not what I meant oh, to do. Nope. You, or I'm you just going to, I'm going to cut. Okay. Okay. Do, over, do over. Okay, well, at least it's a lock stitch there, right? Okay, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to try to U-turn here. That's what I always tell people, that back stitch is called as a U-turn. That's what I meant. I'm going to back stitch here. Okay. <laughs> what I was trying to do is lift my foot, because this doesn't have the little lifter. It has the button, which I'm still getting used to. The hey, Holly, are, thanks for popping in. The buttons are closer. I see, the, I see you. Okay. Happy sewing. <laughs> okay, so if I get a little pleat in here too, I'm not going to care because guess what? It's cuddle. It's going to hide. Okay, let's try this again, guys. Okay, lifting my foot. I did it. Okay, pivoting my foot. <laughs> I feel very proud of myself now. Whew. It's a pretty new mach machine for you, so the it's, buttons are not where you're expecting them to be. Right, and I can't, Give like, I will pass. say that standing and sewing at the machine, you really can't see the buttons underneath there at Oh, yeah, all. I, I, you know what, the camera from top down, is it's kind of hard to see them, too. Yeah, so if I were, you know, sitting at my table, I would be able to see them better, but I can't. So I just, you know, I aim, and sometimes I miss. <laughs> That's what that was. Oops. Okay, so you can see I'll just keep kind of feeding this in because I want it to work. I've already got it in there. What I did find is when I wasn't careful about pinning very much, I had to do that a lot more, a lot more feeding, and then I ended up having it be longer than I thought it would be. So, you know, you'll work it out. 
Okay. More, more pins is less growing. Yes. And truthfully, just letting it kind of work itself in. And like, if you'd have a tiny pleat there, I'm, I'm totally going to let it feed at some point here. And you'll see, oh, here, here we go. Yep. So if I, if I pull this out, it'll help. Okay. But I'm just going to let it pleat right here. And we'll see what happens. Do you see how much work her right hand is doing with that stiletto? If you don't have this, you, you need to get the stiletto for <laughs> this. You need to get this. the stiletto when you're doing like, this, yeah. Yeah, for you, sure. you're not doing that with your fingers. I would, I would encourage you not to. You're, you'll run over your fingers. I'll be bad. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and my back stitch, do my little lock stitch thing, and it'll cut my thread. We'll see how that works. Okay. Now, this is gonna go around and create a shape. So you can start seeing that here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can start seeing the round that's going to happen. Yep. All right, that's what we just did. So where's okay. that pleat? That's right here. Here's some little pleaty action. Okay. Yep. Nice. It's yep. A little gathering on mine. I'm okay. Flip and it then over what's and happening and on the other go. side? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. So just let it feed in there. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine as long as it's not too big. You'll be okay. Okay, if it's a half inch pleat, you should probably just let it go and just feed it out. But if it's just a tiny little eighth inch one, nobody cares. All right, so I'm going to come around here. I'm going to stitch this the rest of the way. So right now I'm just kind of eyeballing. I need it to end about here because that's where my blue starts. Got it. You're about okay. to so I'm kinda just catch the blue. Figuring that out, like, okay, I need it there. Maybe I'll make it just a little back. And then it's, it's easier to stretch this to fit than to feed it into fit. So I'll make it a little bit shorter. And sometimes, like, the it will grow a little bit on the top anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of, you know, just want to kind of get ahead of that idea. 100%. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to add my half-inch seam allowance. I'm going to use my ruler so that I can make sure that it's a straight cut, 90-degree cut across there. Cut it off. Now I'm going to sew on my blue. And again, we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to see, okay, my nap came out. So I need my nap to match here as well. Okay, so I'll lay my fabric down, do a little petting. These naps will match. I'm going to go ahead and stitch those together. Okay, and then when we do the other cloud thing, this will be great because I want to try the hand basting on that one. All right. I, I, I have a tendency to feel like this pattern, this project, has mm -hmm. more pieces than a normal Sew mm -hmm. Together Tuesday project. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you should sort of expect this might take you a little longer. But the, the first part, this, the part that takes you a little bit longer really is just the band part and depends on how careful you want to be about it. If you don't want to do the band, you could sew your two sides together and just be done. You just won't have a shape. It'll just kind of be mushy like this instead. I mean, once you stuff it, it'll, it'll go a little round. It'll go a little round, but sure. it just won't be shaped quite right. as nicely. Got if it's it. just super intimidating to you and you're like, I can't do that, just sew the two sides together. I don't know. I feel like, like I said, I feel like if, once you figure this band project part of the project out then kind of opens up a whole world of it totally stuff. does so i'm going to go ahead and clip in these corners that are you know supposedly corners well that's so this is you can see too. how far down the yeah. rainbow actually goes into your into your cloud yeah so there's plenty of overlap okay which is good so we want the overlap yeah i'm just going to turn do these so that they'll turn just a little bit better when i when i flip it because see how that lets it bend this way better? Mm -hmm. So if these have a little overlap, they'll do this. Better. And it's okay to clip this because it's not going to unravel because it's a knit fabric. Exactly. All right. So now we're going to go ahead. Are you leaving me? No. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm leaving you because I'm trying to do two oh, things at once. Got it. Okay. I... <laughs> I was like, he's moving away. I'm not sure where he's going. Okay. That's where he is. Going off to get the needle. Okay. So we're going to sew this under part first. Gotcha. I'm rushing ahead again. That's okay. It me. You're just trying to, you know, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew the rest of this, and then I'm going to start sewing up. So I'm going to sew to here, and then I'm going to start pinning the other, the other way because it's too many pins. Okay. So I'm going to come back in here where I have all my little pleating that you couldn't tell what's happening. 
And now we're gonna come back over here and start where I was stitching before. Okay, I'm gonna back stitch back to my little point. So that blue point is actually super helpful for me if I can tell where I wanna start. I'm gonna come around this last curve, pull out my pins and I'm gonna keep this open. And again, I'm gonna to try to pivot a little bit on the blue. Or just at the edge of the blue, I mean. One stitch, okay. Now I'm gonna to try to lift my foot. There we go, I did it. Okay, and now we're gonna stitch it the other direction. So where it's kind of going against the inside of the curve. On okay. the pink, we did the outside of the curve. Yep. And this one, we're doing the inside. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little tug over. I saw that your left hand kind of just scritch mm -hmm. the fabric over until the, the, the edges lined up. Yep, and I'm gonna let that go because what I want is Ooh, I almost hit the wrong button. I don't want this to be puckered because if this puckers, we're going to see it. And we don't oh, want because that to it's happen. C3, right? Because it's C3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that if it'll do it. There we go. Now I can pin the rest of it because I don't want to pin this as I'm sewing. Okay, we're going to do I this. I was wondering how long well, you were going to do that. Good. Not very long, just enough to get up onto it because now I've got my seam done here. Got That's it. a pretty good match. That's not bad. Not I bad. see that. Not bad at all. Too bad they don't give awards for that, you know? I might win at this point. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at it. It's really just practice, practice, practice. Okay, so again, we're having the, the weird curvy bit here. So are you stretching that at all? I am trying really hard not to stretch it and just kind of bring it around which is why I'm kind of getting these little puckery things in here. So as I'm doing it, I'll kind of straighten it out just a little bit. Okay. Because I want it to sew about here, about a half inch in. Right. So there's going to be a little bit more at the edge than a half an inch in. So again, I'm going to come around. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to stop it just before the cloud. And then we're going to try it hand stitching wise. So you put two pins in there right there at the end as a marker. As my marker to I know, stop I know you, sewing there. I notice you do that sometimes when you do a turning hole also. Yep, because it's, it's a good visual for me to know like that's where I stop. Speaking of which, this needs a turning hole. It will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're just on the first side, so it's okay. Got it. But we won't make you sit through the second side. We could be here all day. We will be for the rest of you. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be here. So in a way. So I just keep pushing this over with my hand and trying to get those to kind of match up. That's what I'm doing. So you can see I kind of come over here. Can you see that in this side? So I'll kind of get it over here. And then it wants to shove this way. So I can use my stiletto and kind of pull this over. Or I can use my finger. And I just tend to use my finger at this point because I'm pulling it clear over here. And then I let it ease in. Okay, so I will say the inside curve is pretty, pretty sharp. Is that the right, like the curve is, it's sure. a pretty good, sh good turn right there. So it gets a little bit, um, I don't know, where you have to manhandle it a little. The radius is tight. Yeah. Okay. But that's nice and smooth now. Yep. Now we're at the end. You so stop again, again, you stopped before it switches to the white. And I'm going to again measure and be like, all right, so I want it to switch here. So I'm going to add a half an inch. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you. So one of the things, oh, no, no. On the, on the cloud, little guy. On the cloud, we have to be careful about getting those turns the same on both sides or at least close. So um, do take your time on the second side around the clouds. On and this it, part, it's easy enough. I can match this to the other side. But the clouds, we have these curves to kind of match. Okay, so what so what you're saying is whatever whatever choices you made about how to, to construct the corners on the first side of the cloud, do the same thing on the second side of the cloud. Right. So what Got I it. would do is I would go from here. As far I need as to go. Pinning or... Yes, but I need this corner to be about there. Oh, that's okay. So this is what I mean is I need that corner to be about there. Oh, so you have a target. So I have a target. Okay. And I'm going to go across here. Yeah, is that in the pattern? 
It says to match them, but I'm just telling okay. you how. I got it. <laughs> just, just checking. Okay. Yeah, so it says to basically match it as you go. So that's one way that I found that was a little bit easier is I just kind of measure across. So make sure that you're getting your fabric flat using the edge of your ruler. Go across and mark. If it's off a little bit, it's fine. You just ease it in. It's all good. But it does give you at least something to aim for when you're pinning. Gotcha. So it can be like sort of the same. All right, one more. Worry? Nope, this is my extra. Throw that away. <laughs> That's not long enough. <laughs> we'll not get around the cloud. Okay, so again, same thing. I'm going to figure out the nap. Nap, nap. There we go. And I pin these together. And I like to do the cuddle three on the top and the lux cuddle on the bottom. Your mileage may vary, but that is my MO, and it usually works pretty well. Because the lighter one, I like to put the lighter one on top, is really what it is. All right, one more. Ready? Let's do it. And then we're going to try some hand sewing. It's a good thing I did my nails. Okay. All right, get that under there. Pink. Do a little back stitch. Okay, hit the right button that time. All right. So let's do this. So what I want to do is I want to sew this onto here, and then I'm going to hand stitch, hand stitch that on. Well, I'm not going to hand stitch it on. I'm going to hand baste it. So just you know, like we will go over it again. We'll sew it twice. That's exciting. Huh? Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Hawk's like, I'm not trying this project. Kimber Bear is one thing. Rainbow Pillow, not doing it. I'm, I'm happy to stay at intermediate level. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my thread there. I think. All right. So these are milliners, size one. Nice, big, fat, big guys. This is going to be super helpful. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a length of thread if I can get it to come out, which I apparently cannot. There we go. And all I'm doing here is basting. So I'm just going to do one layer. No, she didn't. What did I do? <laughs> she didn't cut her thread with her fabric scissors. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody I don't know in the audience. I don't know where my fab yeah, my thread might scissors have noticed. are. Nope. <laughs> Dang it! You didn't see that. I'm taking that thing off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to stitch this around. What I like about doing this, and sometimes I do this with the stuffies, is that I'm just going. I can just kind of hold it. And kind of stitch it in place. I'm just going to do some kind of big stitches here. And baste it in position. So this works if you don't mind using a hand sewing needle. Because what I've found is when I've done this a few times that I end up having a better, uh, better stitch, better shape to it. And it actually takes me just about as much time to pin it. So the one thing is to make sure that you're you're doing your big basting, and you can see they're big basting stitches, that I'm going to do them at about a half an inch out. So ba you're basically putting the basting stitch exactly where you're going to end up exactly. sewing. Okay. Which is kind of the whole point of basting. So then when I get to here, this is almost to my corner where I need it to pivot. So I'm going to do a little kind of a back stitch. Nancy's going to be over there telling me what stitches are what. I'm sorry. It's not really a back stitch. It's just, <laughs> she's the hand stitcher. I'm not, okay? I just, I fake it. So I'm just going to do big stitches. Okay, and you can see how I can kind of manipulate it with my hands. And I can hold it where I want it to be for a stitch or two. The stitches are so big that it eats up my thread really fast. I guess it's just fast. Okay. 
Okay, so then I'm going to kind of curve this around. Make that be where I want it to be. Okay, so if you need to pin this in place, you are more than welcome to. And I'm pinning through the batting too, which is a little bit harder. So I will say if you try to be careful and not pin through the, the batting, it'll be a little faster. Okay. What do you mean? A little easier. Because I'm pinning back, back through the batting, which is thick. Oh, so it's a little, oh, you can see the, I like, with the, the needle. needle. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're, yeah, but you're basting, basting it. Sorry. Basting what did I say? I was pinning it? Yeah, I was confused. Sorry. No, okay. I'm basting. Yeah, because somebody, somebody was talking to me about it recently, and they were saying about how, like, basically I pin-based with a lot of it. And I was like, I kind of do. Because I'm just using the pins to hold things where I want it to be. But the thing that happens is then you have a lot of pins. And for people who don't really like a lot of pins, this is a way of doing it otherwise. Okay. All right, do we have any other questions on this? Is everybody, like, just happy watching me struggle with a needle? <laughs> I, 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 I... I'm Go for it. Boggled that that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, but wait, it's just that the pins are a lot, and I have found that the curves are a little easier sometimes with the hand hand silly. I'm just not. I'm not going to leave it there because you can see these stitches are huge, and if I started to stuff this, I'd be in trouble. Oh, let's talk about stuffing. So we have um, in the kit, if you get the kit, you get batting with it. You don't get stuffing. So you need to buy your own stuffing for it. And usually I like to use um, silky polyfill, right? That's what it's called. Silky polyfill mm -hmm. from Fairfield, which is really great. We have um, the regular polyfill here today. And if you've heard me talk about it before, the thing that I don't love about the regular polyfill is it can be a little bit lumpy, which is why I like the silky. But the cool thing about doing a pillow like this where we use the batting as a stabilizer while we're doing the um, applique is that it will smooth out that lumpiness. So you won't notice the lumpiness at all. If you do a cuddle pillow with no batting in it and then stuff it with regular polyfill, you'll get some kind of lumpy in it. So there's the, uh, the perk there. Okay. There is a difference between them, and I really do. The silky is kind of nice. You also have to st stiff more to get it to be nice and firm. Oh, yeah. Six of one, how does it matter? Does everybody else use their thumbnail as a thimble? Probably not Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> the collar out the whole time. She's going to take me aside and make me do some embroidery stitches afterward. Like, look, girl, we're going to teach you something. There's just so much to, you know, learn. I can only do so much at a time. I've ever, actually never been able to use a thimble very well. They always bother me. See how it's actually pretty good. I mean, it are you still literally like literally twice as long as it did? The no, it didn't. We're gonna time this afterward. <laughs> it's gonna look better, and it doesn't take twice. See, she's on my side. I'm just a skeptic with the camera. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I've been holding. I've been holding this camera up, and it feels like it took twice as long. <laughs> 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 the stitching will be faster because it is, yeah, it's stitched in place already. And, yeah, you don't have to stop and take the pins out. Nope. Yeah, you can just put the pedal to the metal. That's right. I want to see right. how fast I can do this. That's, just kidding. I'm not really going to sew it really fast. <laughs> it's not a race, and I will do a terrible <laughs> job if I try to do it fast. There's my quasi back stitch. A back based? Is that a real stitch? I don't think so, but I'm going to name it. Almost. I got two more humps to do. That's it. Can you do it? Can I do what? Can you hold it up that long? Can you hold up the camera? I'm doing just fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Sometimes it does get hard. And we, I can't remember we were talking to somebody about it, and they had, like, stood in. Oh, it was when, Aud I think when Audrey did it, and then she was like, you have to hold up the camera for a long time. <laughs> and I was I like, mean, yes, sorry, it's true. We've done some shows that were over two hours long, depending on what the project was. So, you yeah. know, that so, you starts know. to get tiresome, but I'm what? fine. Okay, also, I'm totally cheating right now. You are, because yeah. you can't My, see it at home, but his elbow's yeah. up on the Bernina. <laughs> yeah, he's just chilling out now. So you think I would get tired? Just watch this. All right, so we're going to give that a shot. Okay, so look, I got it basted. It worked out pretty nice. I'm happy with that. I think you're done. I think I'm done. <laughs> Never mind. I'm done. 
<laughs> if we want all the batting or the stuffing to come out the side, you bet I am done. <laughs> We're going to give this to a kid and it's going to immediately pop. That's not cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back again where I stitched before. And then I'm just going to go over this. And I am going to find my stiletto. So I'm going to want this to make sure this is staying where I want it to be. All right, cruise. <laughs> okay. okay. And then I just the biggest thing will be to get this to fold down. Oopsie, where I want it, because that's really the part that I fight with when I'm doing the um, the pinning is trying to get this to lay nicely with the pins and not argue with me. That's pretty good, right? I'm sewing a lot you're, faster. I mean, it's, you're cruising right along. But I'm also watching now. I mean, now that we're kind of in fast forward mode on that, I can see how much effort you're putting in trying to keep the fabric sort of pulled tight. Because I can actually do it this time. With your so left when hand. I'm right, when I'm doing it with the pins, I'm really trying to like keep all of it going at the same time, and it doesn't it doesn't work quite as easily. This one I can just use both hands, and I can kind of keep it where I want to. So it does take the pin taking out out of the situation which is kind of nice got it i will say is why i liked it with the stuffed animals and i was like oh that kind of works neat can we do a little talk about um cuddle in general as far yeah. as like so it's 100 percent polyester 100 polyester right? knit fabric Mi microfiber so microfiber wa the washing instructions for that oh yeah so i mean this pillow is totally machine washable as is all cuddle fabrics um you just need to wash it in cold water and then make sure that you are using a detergent that doesn't have a fabric softener in it. That's the biggest thing, is the fabric softener will destroy the fabrics. Well, it just makes it yucky. Um, so don't do it. Oh, look at that. See, I think that was a faster sew around. Okay. And yes, so you just did the stitch right, the straight stitch right on top of the basting stitch. Right on top of the basting stitch. If I caught it over here and I, like, I find it later that the stitches are hanging out, I could just go ahead and clip that. I mean, I could take that thread out really easily. See? Right there, it's over. My seam allowance is here, but my big stitch is here. I saw can't that. see anything here. Got it. The magic Who of color. Cares? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come up here, do the same thing one more time, where I want the seams to match ish. Okay. So, yeah, that's about where it's going to be. Get that through the one layer, and then I'm going to do. Oops, sorry. I'm going to do this with the same thing here because I want this to come down and be here. Okay. So these two will come and match. Got it. All right. So if I put these just like this and fold it there, they're pretty darn close. I want it so that I have to kind of stretch it just the tiniest bit. Don't make it too loose because then you'll be in trouble. And basically in trouble in that you'll have to redo it, and nobody wants to do that. So I'm going to do this because this is hard for me to get this flat. So I can't really see where it's at. And now I can see where my half itch is better. Okay, so instead of trying to put the ruler over here and getting it flat, which I knew was going to be hard. So here. Oh, that was a good little trick, actually. You want to do that again on the pink side? Sure, or? let's do it. So I just marked where the where I want the actual stitching to be. This will be good because we'll be able to see how well I stitched it. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark it a half an inch past that. And I'm going to mark it because I want to cut it with my right hand. If I were a lefty, that would be perfect. Oh, that was pretty. That was that was a lot of, that was a lot a, of fluff. It was a lot of fluff that just came <laughs> off there. It's <laughs> snowing. <laughs> okay, so now I've got those. I'm going to pin those together. And we're going to sew that half inch seam. And then you'll see how it works Oops. all the way around. Is that the first time I've ever seen you drop an, a, a pin? <laughs> maybe ever? <laughs> <laughs> that would surprise me, but maybe. I don't drop them too often. But that was a perfect little pin drop sound. It was. Trying to find the, the U-turn there. 
So this is a trick that we haven't talked about too much on the on the show before, but this is what people do in class. Sometimes you can't see the blue line too much on the screen because it blows it out, but people will mark their seams and then just sew along the line. So if you have a hard time getting a straight half inch seam allowance, you can absolutely just draw your seam mm. and then sew on the line. Okay, pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna do finish up here. And I'm gonna bring it all the way around and make it complete. Okay. You're opening your, your seam up. I am, and I'm gonna hold it in place with my stiletto here till I get to the join. And then I'm gonna kind of pivot and make it come up around and meet where I was stitching before. Okay, so then I can go ahead and cut that. Okay, so. Because I love you guys, I'm not going to make you watch me do that to the other side. <laughs> but now you know, this was a hard part. So this is the part that I wanted to actually show everybody because it does take some, a little bit of struggle. You can see I got a really even half inch seam allowance. <laughs> uh, is there sarcasm in there? There's so much sarcasm in that. Look got at that. Got it. But, but you on know the what? one side it looks fine and it's the right shape. Mm -hmm. And it's the right shape, so who cares? It yeah. really doesn't matter, and it's Got it. tucked away in there. If it annoys you, which it doesn't really annoy me, you could come in here and you could clip all this and just make it shorter. But in my mind, that's just more fuzz that I don't want to make. And, and also more batting that you need because it kind of just fills up that spot. Yeah, the stuffing will just fill it right up because it's already, I mean, it'll fill up easier because it's already in there. So you're going to do the same thing on the other side. The one thing that is different is that stitching, that um, the turning gap. Okay, so when you're when you're doing this, you need to find where the middle of this is. We're just gonna go ahead and do this real quick here, okay? Right. We're gonna make a turning gap. And I do this on the second side. You could do it on the first, doesn't matter. And what we did is the middle. Let's see what I measured, three inches? Yeah, three inches. I love it when it works out so nicely there. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm going to pin about an inch and a half. The same thing over there. And then we're going to sew that turning gap. So the, the way that we do this with Cuddle, if you're, if you're new to working with Cuddle, this is a great way for getting it to turn nicely. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to sew. I'm going to come back around. Okay, it's just a single layer. I'm going to sew it at a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to do this, just one layer, just on my band, in basically the same spot. I say that and it's not quite. Okay. I wanted to get on my half inch seam allowance there. Okay. Now... When I put these two together, I'm going to work my way around. Same idea. And when we get to this bottom part, we're going to pretend these are sewn up here. Okay, pretend that we've come all the way around here because mm -hmm. I'll finish this later. And then I'll have two rainbow pillows. Somebody said they'd be a good neck pillow, and I think I need to try that when we're done here. Okay. So then when we're, so pretend we've sewn all the way around, we're down to the inside here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this turning gap open where those two match. Okay, so I'm going to pin it on either side. So you remember how we pinned <clears throat> the inside on the other one. Mm -hmm. We're just skipping some steps to get to here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put this so that the longer the band side is on top, because that I need to like manage a little more than the, the cloud shape, which will just stay nice and curved. Oh, because it's stabilized. Right. right. And it's, it, this is yeah trying to fit a curve, which is a little harder. So I'm going to pretend I've just sewn it around the cloud, and I'm coming up this side. Okay. I'm going to pull this over. And then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to stop where I started the little turning gap. And I'm going to pivot. 
You did a little so back, a little back stitch, a little back a, stitch, and then a pivot to the edge, just to like you know, kind of strengthen that section real mm -hmm. good. And then I'm going to go ahead to the other end of that section and do the same thing. I'm trying to straighten that out as it goes under there. So this is a like a easier to sew. Like a, what we call it the L bracket, or a, it's like a reinforcement. It's a for reinforcement the, for the turning hole. Yep. So I'm going to show you. So I do the same thing. So I stick the needle in at a half an inch. I put it down. I stitch off to the edge. I back stitch to where I started, or approximately where I started. Come on, come on. And then I'm going to keep sewing. Okay. So Got then I would just keep going all the way around the pillow, and then I would come down and do this join, and see how this is going to join up really nicely right here. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna do that same thing as we go around. Got okay. It. Does that make sense? Yep. Does it make sense? Okay. All right. So now when we turn it, we've got a little turning gap in here. And we're gonna turn that through. I would probably leave four inches basically. Yeah, that's three, but I think four is what you're gonna need. Okay. So okay. that what that does though is it turns it. So when this gets turned inside out, your turning gap just does this. It automatically tucks the, the right amount of fabric down into your seam allowance. Right. So this seam here, this and little line here, and this little line here are what I'm going to focus on when I'm trying to hand sew this shut, because those are going to come just like that, just so Got it. nice and close. Okay. So that actually works super duper well, and it's kind of like this weird little step to do, but it actually makes a lot of difference. All right. It's just like in the kitchen here. I'm going to throw that in the <laughs> oven. 20 that seconds later. Looks Ta -da. tasty. Isn't that perfect? Amazing, right? <laughs> so hilarious. So it's totally how you do it. Then it, like my turning gap somewhere down here, you can't really find it. I do suggest that you put it under here. So put it in the bottom so you don't notice it. Oh, let's see how it works as a neck pillow. Somebody said it was. Could you imagine taking this on the airplane? Like, <laughs> excuse me. I'm going to get creepy. You can I mean, I, I am 100% in on that. Next time I, we have to fly, I would the like that, The person next please. to you would be like, seriously? <laughs> like, yes, yeah, seriously. It's been a long trip. <laughs> All right. So there you go. So we've got kits available. Were there any other questions we needed to catch up on? I think we're pretty good. If you okay. were gonna, if you were gonna use one of your extra uh, rainbows to, to mm -hmm. as an applique for the front of a blanket, yes. would you just put it uh, down with uh, the zigzag? Yeah, or... I would do it the same way. Yeah, okay. but I would actually build it <clears throat> on the. So instead of building it on the batting, I would build it on the base fabric of the quilt. So if you were gonna do it like on a, a bambino or something on that middle section of the quilt, I would, I would applicate onto that and then you would just make the blanket got it okay so you don't need to put the batting in there the batting helps give this shape the only, and to hold it shape this the way the only trick might be it's you know how you drew those two sorry focus um you drew those two black lines the center and then that one that was five inches you up you could absolutely do that with you the stiletto. could do that with the stiletto on the, the make front your fabric. placement lines got with it. the stiletto okay yeah because that's, that's way... exactly or you could use blue tape you could absolutely use blue tape and put it down there and use that to line up with and then just take the blue tape off before you sew everything down. But use it up to line it. So, yes. Or, you know, the Kimberbell, like the embroidery tape that comes right off. Got it. Lots of things that you could do. Yes. Good question. Uh, okay. Did we have a winner for this week? That'll win a beginner box? There we go. We have okay. Linda B. from North Dakota. There we go. Congratulations, Linda. Please get a hold of us through Facebook or you can email info at shannonfabrics.com and give us your mailing address and phone number, all that good information, and we will send a beginner box to you that you can use to make six different kits that are in there with the three yards that are included, um, along with pins and needles and thread, all sorts of good stuff in there. So you can also find those kits available at quilt shops around the country. All right, so we will be back next week. Thanks for getting through that. That was like, we powered through. Um, we'll be back next week from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Chicago. And we're going to have a special guest for that one. For, so Cheryl Whited um, from Muffin.com is going to join me. And she's the one who wrote the book about smocking that we're going to use. So I'm really excited about that one. So if you are interested in heirloom sewing, we're going to take it to the puddle and see what happens there. So I know what happens. It was great. It was awesome. So we'll be back there next week. Um, anything else I need to tell them? I um, no, I think that's pretty, think that that's pretty much it. I think we're good. That was a All great right. show. All right. So join us next week. I thought.
also subscribe so you can get noticed when we go live because we go live at other times. Oh, right. On Thursday, we're having a live with um, Arvin and Julie, who's the president and general manager of Shannon Fabrics. So on Facebook on Thursday at... Uh, 12.30? 12.30, I think. Is, here time? Eastern uh, time? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Pacific time. Follow Facebook on... Or follow <laughs> Shannon Fabrics on Facebook and get notifications when we go live. What row? And then it'll tell you. It's hard to keep track of. Subscribe. So you can do that. And they're 11 actually 11 a.m. There we go. Okay. Thank you. And, there's, and they're really good to watch because you'll get information about um, fabrics and about the company and all sorts of stuff. So make sure you tag it and, you know, get the notifications for all of our lives. All right. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Happy sewing. All right. And there's a little of that. And then thank you. That was a long hour. <laughs> <laughs>